Welcome future Amazon entrepreneurs. I'm Michael from Smart Scout, and Amazon can really change your life. If you're looking into it because you're tired of the nine to five, you're worried about layoffs, or you just have something that you feel like you need to bring out into the world, welcome. Today we're gonna jump into niches and understand a little bit about what a good niche is and how niches can actually lead to riches. So that's what we're gonna dive into today. I've been selling on Amazon for the past nine years. And let me tell you, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not gonna work for everyone. It does take a lot of work and it takes time. But as you continue to work and you get smarter, you can start to magnify your efforts and you can start to level up your ability. One thing I've been able to experience myself is the ability of dialing into a specific expertise. When we first started, um, one of the things that I really nailed down was, was hobby products, specifically train sets and train tracks and miniatures. I really got to understand that space and I really started to understand some of the seasonality behind it, what products were winners, what products were losers, which one, and I could start to tell beforehand, before I even made a purchase, if something was going to succeed or not. The better you can understand your niche, is gonna turn into better revenue for you. Understanding your ICP, that's your ideal customer profile. In other words, who is buying this product and why are they buying it? There's gonna be multiple people that buy your product. You need to understand each persona so that you can best talk to them and best build products for them. And we're gonna dive into that a little bit in today's video. First off, what's a niche? Well, a niche is really just like a super specific group or interest group inside of a, inside of a category. For, for example, left-handed gardeners could be a niche. Now, is it a super profitable niche? I don't know, right? But it's a very specific type of person. And you could even go niche down further. You could do left-handed gardeners that, that are men over the age of 60, and that's even a more specific niche. And the more you niche down, yes, the opportunity gets smaller, but also the ability to corner the market actually gets better because you can really, really understand that person, right? Have you ever been to a barber shop where that person knew everyone's name? That's actually a great example of them understanding their niche. Their niche is just their community, but they understand it way better. And if somebody else was trying to move in and compete for their clients, it's hard to compete with somebody who knows their clients by name. It's gonna be really hard to compete with this barber who's been there. They understand their customer. They know their likes, their dislikes. They know what to charge and what services to offer and what services just aren't interesting to their clientele. This is what you're trying to do. You're trying to find your corner barbershop, but inside the world of Amazon. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna actually use the tool Smart Scout and we're gonna jump into subcategories. Okay, so here we are in Smart Scout. Next to our first tool right here is subcategories. I'm gonna go ahead and open this tool. Okay, awesome. So let's start from the top. So subcategories, it creates a tree in each category on Amazon. So starting at the top, we have clothing, shoes, and jewelry. That category is a general category, $4.6 billion a month on Amazon. That's billion with a B. It's a lot of revenue. And we can dive in and figure out exactly where that goes. Home and kitchen does 4.4. Um, we talked about gardening a little bit earlier. So we got 2 million, 2, 2 billion, sorry, billion with a B. 2 billion in sales in patio, lawn, and garden. Let's actually look at those subcategories. So these are niches inside of the niche of patio, lawn, and garden. We have gardening and lawn care, $593 million a month. Patio furniture and accessories, $272 million. Outdoor decor, $267 million. Let's jump into outdoor decor. Let's see what we can find here. Backyard birding and wildlife, 57 million. Let's jump into here. So uh, let's jump into birds, 55 million a month in birds. And food is 24 million. Bird seed, 15 million. Mealworms, 4.3 million. Um, and and uh, hummingbird nectar does 1.2 million. So one thing you can do here is you can really dive into each of these and try and understand like, is this an opportunity for me? For example, let's jump into mealworms, specifically mealworms for birds. So this is also what's interesting is when you're looking at the right, at the right niche, there's other people who are going to buy mealworms for other purposes, right? But this is specifically for bird feeders, right? So there's sometimes where you'll have an adjacent, you'll, you'll have an adjacent opportunity that's in a different category that might actually be less competitive. Let's look at this. Let's see how many brands are competing. So we've got 68 brands competing here. Um, 
these guys are doing 1.1 million a month. These guys are doing 325,000 a month, 271,000 a month, 248,000 a month, 229,000 a month, uh, $214,000 a month. Lots of different brands. No one's really dominating. These guys have 26% market share. Um, and it looks like they've grown actually quite a bit recently. So they've kind of taken a, a little bit more control, but there could be opportunity here. Yes, there's a lot of competitors. Um, so let, let me talk about if I was looking to jump in here, one thing that I don't know. So let's talk a little bit about ICP, which I mentioned before. So ICP is who is buying this? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Are they old? Are they young? That's gonna dictate how you brand your product and how you sell your product. It might shock you to learn this, but the interests of teenage boys vary from the interests of middle-aged women. So you need to understand who are you talking to and brand it that way. And when you're when you're thinking about how to advertise, where is this person at? I would, I would start looking for communities of people who are into bird feeding. Um, Reddit's a great place to start with this. Facebook groups really try and understand who are the types of people who are looking for mealworms. As of right now, I have as much information about mealworms as you do. I don't know what kind of birds prefer mealworms versus other things. So that's be the first thing I'd wanna know is, what kind of birds are you trying to attract with mealworms that don't get attracted by seeds? Who prefers those types of birds? Are they men? Are they women? Where in the US or wherever you are, where are those birds present? And that will dictate who you're selling to. And then you can start to build out a persona of, okay, this is the person, they're this age, are they married, are they single? How much do they make every year? Really, everything that you're dictating as far as pricing should be based around a person because then you can start to experiment and figure out and you can even start to build a community if you wanted to around that type of person. It could be women age 40 to 45 and they live in the Midwest and they like a specific type of bird, right? Well, you need to understand that and build your product around them because like our barber, anyone can be a barber, right? But being the barber that understands your audience and your consumer makes all the difference. Anyone can hop in and give a generic mealworm. Can you be the one to give the mealworm to a very specific group inside of this subset? So this is just one example. Um, there are about 20,000 different niches inside of Smart Scout. You can search through. And if you want to, you can actually use the niche finder and you can actually search anything and it'll instantly take you to the bottom node. I always like to start from the subcategory because I can start from the top of the tree and work my way down and back my way into it. But these are some of the logical steps that I would take as I went forward building a brand. We've talked about kind of theorizing and building out an idea. I would actually do this process more than once. I would come up with four or five ideas that you're excited about, that you're interested in. Maybe you're just simply passionate about the, the opportunity. That's the kind of person that I am. Usually I'm just passionate and, and, and as this video has gone on, I've become more and more interested in mealworms. So now I'm interested. So let's add that one. Let's make a couple others. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through a validation process of like, hey, here's my theory. I believe that I can earn a market share and I think I can hit this much revenue, once again, using a tool like Smart Scout, going after this person. Well, see if you can run some tests. There's a lot of things you could do. You could consider building a landing page for your product, even though your product's not real yet, and then running some Facebook ads on it, and then just seeing what your, what your click rate is to give you an idea of, is this something that people are actually interested in? You can even have a buy button there that doesn't actually work. So you know like, okay, I got this many buy clicks from this much in ad spend. Do those numbers make sense? Do they make you excited given the price that you were, were promoting? Well, then maybe you should go further. Do some validating. You can even talk directly to your want to start to build trust in a community. You know, um, an expert seller once told me when I was talking to him about like, well, okay, so I got this product coming in. So now how do I sell it? And he said, well, I would have sold it before it even got in. In other words, he's all about building a community. He's all about people getting excited about his product. So before the product even hits the shelves on Amazon, he already knows that he's got hundreds, thousands of orders ready to go. So that's something that you should start thinking about day one. It's really easy as a first time entrepreneur to become so hyper fixated on the product that you don't think about distribution and sales. Be very aware of your distribution and sales. And at this point, I'd even be considering off Amazon, like understand like, Amazon can be a great starting point for your product. If our mealworm starts selling well on Amazon, where do we go next? Do we go into a, a, a pet supply store? Do we go into Lowe's, into Home Depot? 
What's that process like? Uh, do we start selling? Is, is there a farmer market where this makes sense? Look up most communities will have some kind of a home and garden show at least once a year. See what you can do to be there. Just be creative here. Like this is where you actually start to look at this as a business. What are all of your growth channels and start studying them. So this is all something I would do during the validation process as I'm trying to narrow down from five ideas to which is the idea that we're gonna go with. Sourcing. So there's tons of stuff and we can make a whole video about just sourcing and different techniques for sourcing. I'm just gonna give a couple, a couple basic rules of thumb here. You wanna find a high quality product, you definitely want to get a sample beforehand, make sure it is what you hope it to be. Make sure that your, your branding, that your color scheme looks the way you want it to. Of course, make sure that the product is the, is the right quality. Make sure you're happy with it. A couple, couple quick tricks here. If you're having a hard time finding something like mealworms, I wouldn't even know where to start for sourcing mealworms. Obviously, I would start on Google. Buy a competitor's product and examine it. You should look, because oftentimes that manufacturer isn't owned by that specific brand, and you can reach out to that manufacturer and see if they will also produce your own product as well. So that is just like a, a quick tip, whether you're trying to do it here in the US or overseas. Of course, you have Alibaba and plenty of other sites that can help you find overseas but that's the process I would go through a little bit. And as you figure out your source cost, that will also dictate what your costs can be here in the US. And that's also should be considered kind of like the final step in your validation process is making sure that you can get stuff at the right cost. Okay, let's talk about branding. If you're not just buying an existing product and selling it in a specific niche, and you need to actually develop your own brand, I'd actually would say that branding is as important as you let it be. Don't let it stop you from growing your business. Branding should be all about your ICP. Like we talked about before, who is your perfect customer? What do you know about them? And that's who your branding should be speaking to. When you're writing copy, when you're talking, when you're building this product page, you should be talking to them. You should understand what are their problems, what are the things that they're specifically wanting to solve, and make sure that you're trying to solve them in the best way possible. Be humble. Everyone, I swear, every entrepreneur with their first business, their first company, they they have they come up with a brand and it's sometimes mediocre, but then they're just so stubborn with like, nope, this is this is the name. I'm really excited about it. I even made a logo inside of Microsoft Paint or whatever, and they just get really, really excited. Be humble with it. Like be willing. I would always be looking to chase data. Those of you who follow this channel have heard me say this before, but in God we trust, all others must bring data. See what you can do to try and nail down your branding a little bit, run some tests and uh, make sure that you really understand who you're talking to. So branding, once again, to recap, can be important and is important. It's not the thing that you should be losing sleep over, at least in the beginning. Make sure that your branding makes sense, right? It should be straightforward. It should make sense. It can be fun and creative if you're a fun and creative person, but just know that there are risks whenever you try and do anything outside of the box and that's okay but just accept those risks and go for it. I'll remind you of one last tidbit. Building a community is really, really helpful when launching a product. PPC can go a long way, so can influencers, but if you don't understand your ICP, if you don't actually understand your consumer and what keywords they're looking for, who they pay attention to as far as, as far as influencers go. Like you can't just throw money at any influencer and hope that it influences your right people. You need to understand your niche so that you can actually understand what influencers to even approach here. So really the launch, the success of the launch is determined in every other step leading up to this. And then after this, it's just following through making sure that your your listing is correct, your keywords are good, and doing what you can to bring off Amazon traffic, be it from Facebook groups, be it from Instagram, maybe you could even build a YouTube channel around your mealworms, whatever you wanna do, and this will contribute to you having a successful launch. We've gone over a lot in today's video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, comment what you're most interested in learning next, and I'll try to be able to tackle that in the next video. As a recap, Research is an important place to start. Understand your niche. Go through the process of validate if your idea is a good one or not. Uh, the sourcing process, find a good source that you're happy with and that'll give you the terms that you want. Um, branding, don't get hung up on here, but be humble and make sure that you understand your customer and you're building for them, not for yourself. And then last, launch. Your launch success will come down to your ability to execute before the launch, not after. Um, 
For those of you that have been camping, you'd be surprised at how many people aren't good at starting a fire, especially in like a high stakes situation. They'll use like five or six matches. Here's what I've learned. Piling up as much kindling as possible, as much wood as possible, should be your first step before you ever strike a match. That's always what I do and my fires always start on the first match. It's the same thing with your launch. You should be ready to go with all the kindling, all the wood, all the fuel you're going to need, and then you can light that spark. So the fire is built before you light the match. It's the same thing with a, with a good launch. And last, have fun with it. Enjoy the process, enjoy being an entrepreneur. Once again, like, comment, and subscribe. Use coupon code SMART2024 for 25% off your first three months of Smart Scout. You can dive in, find your niche, get started. Thanks for coming and we'll see you next time.